Hi everyone, welcome back to channel Tech and Art. Hope you guys doing well, safe and sound. So today we will discuss about the four major setting which you should be the, uh, enable in your TempDB. Okay, so all are very important. So please watch the complete video. And before starting the session, I would request to each and everyone whoever newly joined channel, please like to subscribe and don't forget to share with others. Please visit the channel playlist. You will get the more than 200 videos. If you click on a playlist, okay, so you can see here. So let me show you guys. So here is a, you know, one playlist called SQL Server DBA. So more than 200 videos is there, which will will help you to, uh, you know, day to day scenario and real based questions and answers. So let me start today's session. So uh, whenever you, you know, configure uh, any SQL Server installation and any, you know, do the migration of a new project, your TempDB, you know, should have a very, uh, what you call the uh, TempDB setting uh, should be, you know, in an appropriate way, okay, otherwise the performance will be uh, degrade. So these are the four major common things uh, which you should really focus on this area while doing the TempDB configuration, okay. So what are the things? So first is, you know, check the number of database data files, TempDB data files. So the SQL Server by default configuration has a single data files, okay. So Microsoft best practice is recommend to higher, uh, you know, increase the number of data files to maximize the disk bandwidth and reduce the connection. But this features, uh, this 2016 onwards, you know, uh, SQL Server during the installation itself, it is detecting the uh, your core and based on the core, it is creating the TempDB number of files. So it is there, okay. So if you are in future, if you are going to increase the core of a particular VM, so make sure you should think about the TempDB configuration also, right? Based on the core, it will detect the during the installation how much core you have on a particular VM and it will create a number of TempDB files. Okay. Second thing is review the size and auto growth setting. This is very, very important thing. But the recommendation is set a higher, a higher uh, you know, uh, size uh, during the TempDB file creation, set a large right size, right? So and adjust the auto growth setting for the fixed value. Don't use the percent. This is very, very important things. People are doing the, you know, increase auto growth set by some percentage, like 10% or 20%. Don't do it like that. Set as per the, you know, based on your need, environment need, set a lump sum amount of uh, size for an auto growth, right? Like a 500 GB to 250 GB in a one shot, okay? Not like to 10%, 10 is an all. Use a dedicated hard disk. TempDB should be a dedicated hard disk. Don't, you know, merge TempDB with any data file or log file, okay? TempDB always should have a dedicated hard disk. And the fourth most important thing is use the trace flag 1117 and 1118. So you can go and read what is this trace flag is doing basically. So it is related to the, you know, perform the uh, faster behavior of TempDB, but the, the Microsoft, what he did in 2016 onwards, your new new versions, uh, it is a standard configuration like 1117 and 1118. So these four things really you need to focus while, you know, configuring the SQL Server and, you know, uh, designing the TempDB settings and all. So these are the more, more focus area. And based on that, definitely your TempDB uh, behaves very good and the query processing is very well so well that's it for today it's a short uh, update but it's very useful yeah thank you